In this video, I want to talk about the difference quotient. It's a quotient that ends up being important when you get to calculus, but in this video, I'm going to simply talk about how to evaluate the dif difference quotient. Let me show you just a bit about where it comes from, though. Suppose I have the function shown here, and I find a couple points on the curve that represents this function. I want to consider a couple points on that particular curve. I'm going to let this first one be right here, and I'll let its x-coordinate just be x, and hence its y-coordinate will be f of x. And let me move just a little bit to the right, and I'll move out to the right h units. So this is h right here, and so the x-coordinate will be x plus h, and let me draw the point up here. And its y value then would be f of x plus h. Now let me draw the line that goes through those two points. In particular, I'm interested in the slope of the line that I just drew. Notice that two of the points on this line are x, f of x, and x plus h, f of x plus h. So if I'm concerned about the slope of the line, we could calculate the slope by subtracting the y values. So f of x plus h minus f of x divided by the difference between the x values, x plus h minus x. Now in the numerator, I can't do any algebra to simplify that, but in the denominator I can. So I would have f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And we have the slope of that line, and that's called the secant line. And this ratio right here is called the difference quotient. And let me remind you that we found two different points on the line. One x-coordinate was x, and the other x-coordinate was x plus h, just a little bit to the right of x. So that h value can't be zero because it, otherwise we would have the same point twice. So let's just jot that down. We'll say that h can't be zero when we're calculating the difference quotient. We're now going to practice evaluating the difference quotient for a variety of functions. So let's begin with this function, f of x equals 17x minus 14 and our job is to find the difference quotient. Let me remind you how to substitute a few different types of values into the function first before we calculate the difference quotient. Suppose we were finding f of five, remember that means we would take 17 times five minus 14, and we would do the arithmetic there. What is that, 85 minus 14 or 71? Or we could find f of 3a, that means we substitute 3a into the function, and we would simplify and just have 51a minus 14. Or more importantly, what if we had a binomial like f of um, x plus 4, and we were substituting that into the function, we would have 17 times x plus 4 minus 14, and again, we would do some simplifying. This one would take us a couple of steps to get through, and we would have 17x plus 54. So that's just a refresher on how to substitute particular values into a function. But now let's actually calculate the difference quotient. Here's our function, f of x equals 17x minus 14. And our job is to find f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. We know it will equal. 
I'm going to do some calculation here for f of x plus h. Let me put in some big brackets here. And then we'll subtract f of x. I will substitute that in in just a moment. And then we will divide by h. So let's focus first on finding f of x plus h. That means I substitute x plus h into the function. Just in the same way I substituted in, in, substituted in x plus 4 just a moment ago. So that means I would have 17 times x plus h minus 14. And there is our f of x plus h. Then I will subtract f of x. That means just the, subtract the function itself. That is 17x minus 14. And we're going to divide that difference by h. Let's do some simplifying. In the numerator, I will distribute that 17, and I will have 17x plus 17, or, uh, 17 h minus 14. And notice the coefficient right here is just a 1 in front of the brackets, so I didn't have to do anything to clear out the brackets. Right here, and this is an important detail, notice the coefficient is a negative 1. I'm going to distribute a negative 1 to get rid of the second set of brackets. So I will have minus 17x plus 14, and I'm going to divide by h. Let's simplify more. Our 17x's will cancel. We also have a negative 14 and a positive 14, so those will be gone as well. So I have 17h over h, and that reduces, and our result is just 17. Let's try another one. In this one, our function will be f of x equals x squared minus 22x plus 43. Let's find our difference quotient. So we have f of x plus h minus f of x, and we'll divide by h. So that will equal this quotient. And now I'm going to draw this big division sign. I have some calculation to do to figure out f of x plus h. So let me put some big brackets in here. Then I will subtract f of x. And we're going to divide that by h. So let's find f of x plus h. Remember that means we substitute x plus h into the function. So this x plus h will need to be substituted both here and here. So here we go. We'll have x plus h squared minus 22 times x plus h plus 43. And we have f of x plus h. And then we'll subtract f of x. So that's the function itself. So that will be x squared minus 22x plus 43. And that difference, again, will be divided by h. Let's simplify. So we have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 22x minus 22h plus 43. That takes care of what's in our first set of brackets. Now we'll distribute the negative 1 that's in front of our second set of brackets. So we have a minus x squared plus 22x minus 43. And we're dividing that by h. Let's continue to simplify. Notice we have an x squared minus x squared. We have a negative 22x and a positive 22x, and we have a positive 43 and a negative 43. So when we simplify, we will have 2xh plus h squared minus 22h divided by h. And notice we have a common factor of h, so let's cancel that. And our result is 2x 
plus h minus 22. Let's calculate the difference quotient for another function. This function is f of x equals 5. This one's a little bit entertaining, but before we get to the difference quotient, let me remind you how you evaluate this function at any point. If I asked for f of 3, the result would be 5. Or f of 14, the result would be 5. Or f of a, the result would be 5. And in particular, that means f of x plus h would equal 5. Keep that in mind as we move now to the difference quotient. We want f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So f of x plus h is just 5 minus f of x. Well, f of x is also just 5, and we're dividing by h. I just wanted you to see this one because sometimes this throws people off, even though after you see it, it's actually pretty short. Let's simplify. We have 0 over h, which we know equals 0. It turns out when your function is just a constant, your difference quotient will always be 0. Here's our last one. Our function will equal 6x over x plus 4. So let's jump in. We're looking for f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Let's substitute x plus h into our function. So we'll have 6 times the quantity x plus h divided by x plus h plus 4. There's our f of x plus h. And we're going to subtract that from that 6x over x plus 4. And we divide that entire thing by h. There are a couple of ways to simplify an expression that looks like this. But let me just start by getting rid of those parentheses. So my complex fraction looks like this. 6x plus 6h divided by x plus h plus 4 minus 6x over x plus 4 divided by h. Now what I'm going to choose to do to simplify this complex fraction is multiply the numerator and denominator by the least common multiple of all the denominators. And let me remind you that the denominator of h is just 1. So I'm looking at the denominators and I see x plus h plus 4, x plus 4, and 1. The least common multiple, you may want to call it the least common denominator, of those denominators is the product of x plus 4 times x plus h plus 4. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by that product. That means this first fraction will be multiplied by x plus h plus 4 times x plus 4. This next fraction will be multiplied by x plus h plus 4 times x plus 4. And the denominator will be multiplied by x plus h plus 4 times x plus 4. Sorry, that was a little sloppy right there. Let me make it a little bit nicer here. Let me erase just a little bit and fix it. We'll have x plus h plus 4. That's better. So now let's do some canceling. We have this x plus h plus 4, which cancels with this one. So in the numerator, I will have the product of 6x plus 6h and x plus 4. I'll calculate that on my next step. Now on my next step, expression right here. I have an x plus 4 that's going to cancel. So I will have minus 6x times x plus h plus 4. And in the denominator, 
I have h times x plus h plus 4 times x plus 4. Let me slide this up a little bit to make room for more work. Okay, let's, that'll be enough. So when we multiply those two binomials together, I'll have 6x squared plus 24x plus 6xh plus 24h. When I distribute the negative 6x, I'll have minus 6x squared minus 6xh minus 24x. Let me fix that a little bit. Write it a little bit neater. It's minus 24x. And we're dividing by h times x plus h plus 4 times x plus 4. And there is no need to multiply that out. I want that denominator to stay factored so I can see if I can reduce at the end. Let's see what more we can do in the numerator. We have a 6x squared minus 6x squared. We have a 6xh and a minus 6xh. And we have a 24x and a minus 24x. So we now have simply 24h in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we have h times x plus h plus 4 times x plus 4. And finally, we see that the h's can cancel. And our final answer for this problem is 24 over x plus h plus 4 times x plus 4. So remember what we started with. We were looking for the difference quotient that you can see up here. And our result is right here. And that's how you'd present your answer.